Hey everybody, Dan here with LeafScore.com. Today I'm going to be talking about the Tesla Powerwall Plus. This is the newest solar battery from Tesla. Specifically, I'm going to be discussing uh, how long these can uh, power my home off-grid. So I'm going to simulate blackout conditions so we can take a look at exactly how long our home can be powered just using our solar system and the two Tesla Powerwall Pluses that I have installed here in our garage. Just a few quick stats up front here. Like I said, these are the Tesla Powerwall Plus. Uh, they have 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage each, so I have 27 kilowatt hours total uh, worth of storage. I also have an 8.8 .8 kilowatt solar system from SunPower. Uh, so throughout this experiment, we will not just be relying on the Tesla power walls. Uh, we will instead be relying on the power from the power walls and our solar system. So that's an important note because until recently, power walls could not be installed without a solar array. Tesla has recently changed things, so now you can get these power walls installed without panels. So they can basically serve as an electric generator if you don't have panels installed. I would recommend installing panels alongside your Tesla power walls. That way, as you'll see in this experiment, hopefully, uh, the panels will recharge the batteries throughout the day, provide excess power, the panels will power our home, provide excess power to the batteries, recharge these so that they're good to go again at night. I'm looking through our stats here just to give you an idea of how much energy we consume on a daily basis. So our home yesterday consumed 11.9 kilowatt hours. Uh, we do use far less electricity than most people, so just take that into consideration when um, we're walking through this experiment. So the day before that was 8.6 kilowatt hours of usage. Uh, the day before that was 15.1, the day before that was 12.1. So we use around half of what our batteries can store total. Uh, so theoretically, we should be able to use our power walls to power our home through the night. And then during the day, our panels will recharge the power walls, get them ready again for night. Uh, the panels, our solar array is oversized for our home, so we should power our home with our panels directly and recharge the batteries at the same time. So ideally, we will be able to last indefinitely uh, on our power wall power only. Now, obviously, that's not always going to be the case. It's going to depend on how many power walls you have installed, uh, how much home consumption you have every day, the size of your solar array, and a few other factors. Uh, however, we'll talk about the considerations later. Right now, I want to take our home off grid and start using the power walls solely for power for our home. So this is the Tesla app right now. You can see that our solar array is producing 3.5 kilowatts. Uh, it's sending it to, the, to our home, which is consuming 0.5, and it's exporting three kilowatts to the grid. So right now you can see we're not using any power from our power wall, it's 100% charged. So right here you can see there's an option to go off grid, so I'm going to click that. The first time you do this, you will need to pair your phone. That just involves turning on and off the power wall. There's a button right there on the side of the power wall. So here I'm going to click go off grid. And we are fully off grid. So you see that there's a disconnect there. And now the power wall has started to provide power to our house. So our house is consuming 0.5 kilowatts. Our power wall is providing 0.5 kilowatts. We have the uh, battery percentage right there and up here. So I'm going to leave our house off grid for uh, 24 to 48 hours, depending on what I see in the app. Um, and then we'll come back, we'll talk about um, how much uh, energy has been depleted from the batteries, how much has been recharged from our solar system, and some other considerations that can change things based on your home. So I'll be back in 24 to 48 hours. Okay, I'm back. It's been a little over 24 hours that we've been totally off grid. Uh, the Tesla power walls I'm going to show you in a little bit are at 98% capacity right now. Um, so overnight they dipped down to 85% when my panels weren't producing any energy and were consequently not recharging the batteries. And then uh, gradually throughout the morning, the battery percentage increased back up to 98%. So we're more or less full uh, once again. So I'm going to jump over to the app and show you how much energy uh, discharged from the batteries and then how much was recharged via my solar panels over the last 24 to 30 hours. Okay, so here is the Tesla app right now. So as you can see, the uh, panels are not providing power to the battery right now as it is almost full at 98% capacity. 
Uh, I, it says up here that we are currently off grid and we have over 24 backup hours remaining. And that's of course, without any uh, added energy from the panels. So I'm going to show you the discharging rate of the battery. So today it discharged a total of 3.2 kilowatt hours so far. Um, and that's just for today. Uh, we can go to the solar production and you see that even as we were off grid, the solar production picked up around six when the sun, sun came up and it jumped up to 5.2 kilowatts of production and then eventually dropped down when the battery stopped needing to be recharged. So the system automatically handles recharging of the batteries using your solar panels, which is really great. Takes things totally out of your control and does everything for you uh, remotely and wirelessly. So I'm gonna take a quick look at our home usage as well today. So far it's uh, around 1 p.m. Uh, today so far we've used 4.8 kilowatt hours. And again, the battery is currently at 98% capacity. So that home usage of 4.8 kilowatt hours put basically no dent in the storage of these batteries. Uh, if we go to yesterday, you can see that we used a total of 12.3 kilowatt hours in our home. I'm gonna jump over to solar production. Uh, 10 kilowatt hours, you see the same trend of charging and, and not charging the batteries. And then I'm going to go to the battery, so you see we started, uh, we pulled off grid around 9 a.m. So at 6 a.m. you see that the batteries were charged a little bit and then they were discharged pretty significantly. And then this middle area is where my panels were charging the batteries. So there was really no net loss of energy from these two power walls. And then you can see in preparation for night, it looks like the power walls charged themselves to 100%. So as I checked last night, we were around 99%. So that is what it seems to be indicating here. So this is a look at our grid usage. So you can see around 9 a.m. Uh, so we were exporting until around 9 a.m. when I took our system off grid. It shot up to zero as we weren't exporting anymore. Um, and then obviously the batteries aren't gonna export power to the grid because they're uh, reserving that power to uh, provide electricity to your home. So if we go to today, you'll see that it's entirely at zero. So this is what you can expect to see when your home is off grid. So once again, I'm going to go back to our home and you see we have 98% battery remaining after 30 hours of constant use for these two Tesla power walls. So to wrap this video up, uh, the power walls are useful for providing power during blackouts because these Powerwall Pluses at least, both provide 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage for use in your home. So based on our daily usage, uh, that would provide around one day of power to our property. However, as you can see in this little experiment, uh, we can get way more than that. So our batteries after around 30 hours of being, or around 30 hours of our system being off grid, our batteries have been recharged to 98% capacity. So in reality, we can last more or less indefinitely off grid if we need to, because our panels will continue charging our batteries as our batteries are discharged to provide power to our home. So basically we have an indefinite amount of power supply for our house. Now there are some things to consider uh, when you are sizing a system for your home and, and thinking about how much or how long you can go off grid with your Tesla power walls. Uh, first, the size of your storage system, so the number of power walls you have installed, and the size of your solar system is obviously going to make a difference. The more solar batteries you have, uh, the more power they will hold, obviously. Each one adds around 13 and a half kilowatt hours of uh, storage capacity. So the more batteries you have, the longer you'll be able to last, even without input from your solar panels. The size of your solar array matters as well, because if it's appropriately sized for your home, then ideally they will recharge uh, about the exact amount that your power walls provide to your house throughout the day, or more likely your panels will provide power to your house and your power walls will just maintain power throughout the day and get discharged from any excess energy produced by your panels. Another consideration to make is that it has been sunny here for the past uh, 30 hours, obviously not at night, but uh, yesterday and today were both relatively sunny with minimal overcast. So in cloudy conditions, your panels are going to generate less energy, which means that there could be a bigger difference between 
uh, what your panels are creating and what your home is using. So if you use more electricity than your panels are generating, then obviously your power walls aren't going to get fully charged throughout the day. It's been sunny here, uh, it's springtime here in New York, and it's been sunny these past two days. So we've seen the power walls get charged basically up to 100% uh, even after they're discharged at night. And finally, your home energy consumption is going to matter. Uh, based on where I live, which is New York, we have a slightly below average consumption rate. So um, even though our system is appropriately sized for how much electricity we use, um, the amount of energy you, you consume throughout the day in your house is going to have an effect on how long your power walls can provide energy and how quickly your panels can recharge your power walls if they start to discharge when sunlight is not available. One more consideration to make is that there are different kinds of inverters. So if you have what is called an islanding inverter, that means that your inverter can separate you from the grid entirely in blackout conditions or controlled blackout conditions uh, like we just went through. Um, it can separate and keep the uh, electrical line workers safe uh, even while your panels are producing energy and routing them to your batteries. And just for quick reference, I do believe that an islanding inverter, also called an off-grid inverter, is considered standard now. However, that is something to check uh, with your solar installer. If you want the ability to recharge your batteries with your solar array throughout the day and last for much longer than your batteries otherwise would off-grid, then make sure you confirm with your installer that you're getting an off-grid or islanding inverter. A non-islanding inverter will not provide the same ability, so in that case, if we had a, a non-off-grid inverter or a non-islanding inverter, theoretically, we could last for one day without power. Uh, again, this is an undersized system for our house and consumption rate, but I knew that we were getting the islanding inverter and I knew that our panels were oversized for our house. So in turn, that means that we can last much longer off grid. So overall, the power wall pluses are useful for blackout conditions, even if you don't have input from a solar system. But if you do have input from a solar system and you have an inverter which allows you to recharge your batteries during the day, even when you're disconnected from the grid, um, they can provide power for many, many days and possibly even weeks. In our case, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we could last more or less indefinitely uh, with just these two power walls, which are undersized for our home. These should only supply power for a day and realistically we can get power for many weeks and possibly even indefinitely. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll do our best to get back to you and we'll see you in our next video.